Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Good morning, John. How are you? Hey, Art. Good to see you again. Uh, happy blogging day. Yes. You f you founder, you. Is you that the, Celebrating that, Act 2 the founder. That's the eighth day of the week, blog day, <laughs> which is a whole, whole lot the same as Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Huh? Right. Could be. Could be. Yeah, blur day. It always... Vlog always sounds like a Russian word to me. It, okay. You know, I, I, anyway, I don't speak Russian, so it doesn't matter. Don't. Uh, oh, that's right. You, you only you, have, you only otherwise don't speak Irish. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's very true. So uh, you have a topic for us, you, uh, a very salient point of discussion. Yes. Am I correct? Salient. Nice, nicely said, John. Nicely yeah. said. Yeah, um, it's uh, it's almost as if it's a conversation about are we opening, are we reopening, are we reopening too much? What's your experience? And I'm sure that our audience has an amazingly wide variety of experiences and feelings you about bet. are I'd we love reopening? To hear from them. Yes. Right. Yes. So um, Re now you're talking about reopening. Anything. The world. The world. Re the schools. And reopening the from and... our stay at home status. Yes. Okay. Our yeah. lockdown status. And for yeah. many of us, uh, it's opened up uh, to some degree a while ago, depending on where you live or how you think about things. Uh, I know that you've gone out to some restaurants. I have not. Right. Uh, I've we taken just went out in... last night. Ah. Last night we went out uh, to a very nice Thai restaurant. Oh, you, uh, uh, you, give them a you no longer you, you're no longer favoring uh, Italian, which you, of which you have thirteen in your neighborhood. <laughs> well, I'd go to an Irish restaurant if I had one, but right. Well, we have to go are... to New York for that a pub, <laughs> if there are any still um, open. So yeah, a Thai one on very nice restaurant. And uh, the lady explained to us that they're only allowed to, to seat 25%. Were you inside and or uh, outside? Inside. 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 Yeah. Uh, but this is the first restaurant we've been to in quite a while that we could sit out inside. Mm. I, I don't know when they changed the rules, but they changed the rules now so you can sit inside. And, of course, there are a lot of people still sitting outside, and there's some restaurants that are only outside, I guess. But... Um, you know, it, it's not going to open up until they get more than fifty percent permission. Right. Well, so. I, I think I think that a part a part of um, reopening is uh, 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 there are some people who just never believed in vaccines, never believed in masks, so on and so forth. So to them, it's nothing new, and they were probably uh, uh, pushing the edges anyway uh, to restaurants that would allow or bars that would allow them in. Um, uh, you and I, I think, were more cautious in different ways, uh, but now we both had our vaccines, right? And uh, so we're at a point now where, while we don't feel completely safe, uh, we feel a whole lot more confident. Uh, but I still wear masks every place that I go, uh, and I'm still not ready to sit in a restaurant because, quite frankly. In my estimation, I don't know the answer to uh, whether or not, uh, while the vaccine will prevent, uh, as they say, death or hospitalization and death or a serious version of COVID, uh, even for the more fast spreading ones, it still seems to protect you against that. I don't know whether or not I still can't be a carrier and transmit to other people. So uh, I'm sort of caught in that continue to protect myself and others. I feel like a restaurant, no matter what you do, people have masks off and they're talking and they're spreading stuff around. Uh, right. So in any event, well, but, it, but I understand people who are out there, particularly people eating outside, and we certainly bring food in from time to time. Yeah, I, let's face it. At least half of all these rules that, that have been part of the shutdown, at least half of the rules are just bullshit. Forgive my language, but they're bullshit. It, 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 and here's my example. You go into a restaurant, whether it's 25% permission full or 50%, doesn't matter. You go into a restaurant, you'll wear a mask 
but you can take it off at the table. Well, of course, you have to take it off to eat, right? That makes sense. But the difference between walking in with a mask and sitting down without a mask? Sorry, guys. I, this is not based on science. Right. I think it's based on the economics of we've got to let the restaurant free open. So, you know, we'll make a rule. But I, I think that the indoor uh, seating portion is probably still a mistake. So we have, to, yes, it is bullshit, but it's yeah, like, I, I, I did, well, you and I disagree. So I, we, I do, we differ on that. Restaurants should have been open for a long time, fully so, open for a long time. So let's talk about some of the parts that even our audience might agree on. So uh, uh, Linda and I have both had our uh, shots uh, of both doses and uh, uh, probably a month and a half ago, we had our, our second shot. So we've actually had a sleepover with our two youngest grandchildren uh, already. Uh, we've gone to uh, their house and unmasked at the house. Uh, one of the valuable things is that Mike does en enough traveling for his uh, 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 production work that he gets tested for COVID uh, at least once a week and he has uh, jobs that he does for uh, in Hollywood where he has to be tested for it. So uh, 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 we feel pretty safe in their house. So in that bubble, we're feeling pretty comfortable. Now, I, I want to ask you about that. Not everybody is. I, I want to ask you about that because mm -hmm. we know. And now do, do I take it that your your son and daughter in law are exposed to what crowds people and that that's why you're cautious with them because they might have co they might have caught covid is that that why you're cautious because the kids yeah the, the kids we're, the kids we've actually earlier on when uh, they were being homeschooled and uh, my uh, daughter-in-law was still teaching uh, we would be over there supervising uh, a couple of days a week so being in the house with them uh, was always sort of like part of our bubble uh but yes, because there was exposure, they felt uncomfortable about what they might give us. And now that we've had the, uh, the vaccine, uh, the, the, likely, the likelihood of them being exposed is relatively low, number yeah. one. And number two, uh, we've had the vaccine so that should we get exposed to something, it's likely not to be a catastrophic event. Right. See, our, we've, we have a completely different approach. Yep. Um, we have never limited visits from the grandkids uh, or my son-in-law and daughter who live up the hill or my other children and mm -hmm. their and their children. Um, it's, it's real simple. Their family bubble and our family bubble, we all know who's sick and who's not sick. And we're not, it's not like I see them every day. You know, it's every right. every other day, every week of who knows whenever it is. But they know when they're sick. They know when it's a cold. Even if they don't know whether it's COVID, they know they're... And they've simply said, look, if we're not feeling well, don't come over. Right. You know, or, or something like that. So visiting and family members and hugging and all of that stuff... I've never, right from the beginning, never subscribed to the idea that we have to wear masks in our own house or my daughter's house when we go to visit, or the kids have to wear masks to visit us. I, it's just, you know, it was too obvious that we're all healthy or when we wouldn't be healthy. Mm -hmm. So, so, so anyway, so, we, so everybody has a, a, a different ways of looking at it and different senses of it. I'm, uh, we Between the two of us, I'm probably a little bit more cautious. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then you, yep. that doesn't mean that you're, you're not responsible, just that we have different degrees of, of caution. Uh, for instance, uh, we've gone to a Little League game. Now we wore masks and most right. of the parents wore masks, but there were one or two who did. Uh, but it was yeah. outside. And uh, we're supporting him and uh, our, uh, the, the, the little, uh, our little granddaughter, the six-year-old, uh, is now back at gymnastics under much less packed circumstances. 
And right. uh, uh, I went to watch her uh, practice gymnastics uh, the other day. So, but I've had my shot, so I feel less concerned about me now than ever before. And I never stopped going out shopping. Sometimes I would wear a double mask. Okay, so my abundance of caution, but I didn't prevent myself from going any place. And I washed my hands and and uh, wore a mask and all those kind of things that made me feel comfortable. So, uh, I, I think things will start to open up. But what's going on? And since we, uh, our vlog is 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 uh, uh, fairly timely to the time we tape it. What's going down in Miami cannot be safe. Right. 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 Uh, right. But of course, that happens every year, and it's not safe. <laughs> it's not safe, but it, it's not for any number of reasons. But it's unsafer now than ever before because you know that there are a lot of people going to get COVID out of that. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, it's guaranteed. So, and, then, <laughs> and the wonderful thing is that they're all going to go back to school and take it back with them. Right. And so, uh, and even uh, with schools reopening, uh, I think uh, have your your grandsons uh, near where you live. Have no, they been back still, in school at all? No, they 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 all the school districts are a little bit different, but uh, one school is still mostly online. One one son had grandson has a uh, he goes once a week to classes. Mm. Now somebody explained that to me once a week. Why not twice a week? Right. You know, why not five times a week? Why uh, any time? It, yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably a staffing issue more than anything else. Staffing and and having I, in other I words, disagree. that they only have. Let's, let's say they only have 20% of the kids. Let's say they will only accept 20% of the kids in the same place that they used to have 100% of the kids. Then they may only be able to take one-fifth of them on any given day. I mean, I can understand some of that stuff. Uh, I, and I, 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 here's where you and I disagree. I think most of it's political. I think they, I think if they had the political will to open the schools, they would find a way. All the private schools have been open all this time. And and nobody's reporting COVID. So well, yeah, that's you and me. It's wonderful that, that you know they must subscribe to loose lips sink ships. So they don't they're very good about keeping secrets. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, now, I, could, I, I couldn't I, possibly be couldn't possibly be that maybe nobody got COVID, right? I think that by the fall, uh especially giving uh uh the staff professional staff, teachers, uh, uh, the people who do uh, all the maintenance, bus drivers, when they all start getting their shots, they will have a confidence level that's different than it is today, even though it may be relatively safe. I just saw an article the other night on, uh, I think it's uh, in uh, uh, Marietta, Marietta, Georgia, where they've been open throughout. And uh, they've had a couple of cases, but basically it's been pretty safe. And they had all sorts of theories about why it's sort of reversed that the little kids actually spread more than the middle school and the high schoolers. And they had concepts of reasons why that happened. But, uh, you know, they're muddling through it. And I think by fall, 90% uh, of the kids, uh, well, more wow. will be open. They'll reopen. Um, I think it's interesting that... Um... That businesses... Uh, my son-in-law is very... Uh, had had advantage in that he could work from home online. Ah. And um, I noticed that half of the time he's on Zoom or Skype with yeah. either clients or co-workers. You know, the, the, the need for human interaction isn't diminished just because you're at home. Right. And while things may change, we may all be working from home and using Skype and Zoom instead of going to an office, um, by, by I think choice, it, it proves it by proves choice. that that you need to you need to contact with coworkers, and you need just like you and I do, mm -hmm. you need the co collaboration uh, with with people in your business. So um, I'm not sure how it'll all shake out, but I think, uh, according to my son-in-law. It's it's nowhere near as effective. And I watch the kids online at school. They're not learning squat. But mm -hmm. my son-in-law says it's not as effective to communicate online as it is in the office. Just yell down the hall, hey, Jim, did you get that section? You know, that kind of thing. Um, 
So I, I don't know how it's all going to shake out, but I know you know it's going to be different. Well, you know, there is one group that has absolutely uh, found this to be no problem at all. Uh, and uh, I think we ought to do an interview of the National Association of Recluses. Because uh, they seem to have not been affected by, and they don't use Zoom or Skype. They pretty much stay to themselves. Uh, so uh, we ought to talk to them and see how they turned out. But I, I think uh, 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 you'll agree that uh, whether you're more conservative or less conservative about uh, transmission of disease and governmental uh, imposition and so on and so forth, that all of us are beginning to open up more. Uh, and probably over the next two or three months, uh, particularly because there will be a sense of security with four more people being vaccinated. That Well, uh, let's hope so. Let's yeah. hope so, because, Art, there's lots of people who don't want to take the vaccine. No, 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 but still there will be, uh, there probably will be at least 60%, if not 90%, that will have had it, and they will have far less concern about them getting a serious version or having serious consequences. And so right. they, they at least go out with masks and they might be willing to eat outdoors, especially when coming to the summer, uh, where it makes that far more uh, available. So I, I think still that no matter what happens, uh, unless there's another, you know, 600,000 people uh, uh, who succumb to this over the next uh, six or eight months, which would be, you know, devastating, it should be going the other way. Uh, that, that things will open up, all each in our own way, some more slowly, some more quickly. Cross, cross my fingers. I think I've crossed them. Uh, I hope that's true, uh, because it, it, I, my personal opinion is that it's long overdue, that half of what we're going through is man-made, uh, uh, psychological man-made or political, whatever you want to call it, and that the, the science doesn't support quote, the science doesn't support everything that we've been going through. And w witness the different, every state is different. Uh, maybe not, some states are not too far different than others, but um, we know that some states have been successful and some states haven't. And they've got different techniques, different closures, whatever you want to call it. So, um, that, and that, and plus the history of pandemics is that they ebb and flow. So forget our techniques, whether we're doing right or wrong or whether there's politics involved. The history of pandemics is that they do ebb and flow. They hit hard, they spread fast, they slow down, then they come show up again. So it's not something we can take lightly. We have to, we have to be cautious about it and be prepared for a lot more than another year. Well, I'm going, I'm going to uh, save us all <clears throat> from the next discussion immediately at this moment on okay. the relative um, uh, uh, deadliness of COVID versus anything else. But we're still far outstripping influenza. We lose about 50,000 people a year. Right. Okay. Right now we're more than 10 times that amount for COVID. Now the question is, right. will it just be recurring every year as a 50,000 person killer once we have enough vaccines around? Or will it ebb and flow, as you say, a better word? So we could have this conversation, but still, it, right. the, the, the number one killer is heart disease. The number two killer of Americans is cancer. And COVID has, has uh, absolutely gone into third place for now. And until we get it to something where it's more manageable, like influenza, which is, again, is about 50,000 a year, as our traffic right. deaths, uh, I think there's still a reason for concern about how easily it spreads around. And if not for us, if we're safe, uh, then for other people that we care about who might get it. So anyway, right. differing opinions uh, throughout the U.S., but yep. we're, you know all what, saying, we're all seeing a light at the end of the tunnel for whatever before reason. We close, yeah. Before we close, I want to ask everybody who's watching to email us and tell us what it's like where you live. Is it opening up fast enough for you? Is it? Are you being more cautious? You worried about it? Are you thinking of not taking the the uh, COVID vaccine for some reason? Let us know. Let us know what's going on with you and with your area of the country yeah. where you live. Yeah, right. we'll share it with everybody. 
And we look forward to all of us uh, getting back together and being to just have that physical contact, as John was talking about before, uh, in restaurants, over a cup of coffee, at a coffee shop. So, uh, yep. and family get togethers. Good. All right. In the meantime, everybody, stay well, stay healthy, and uh, take some precautions for your health. Okay. The biggest precaution, though, that everybody can take is go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. <laughs> Thanks for letting me that's, put that in, John. That's the most important thing anybody can do. Yes, right. I agree. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.